Hi, my name is Teresia Kabura. I'm a beneficiary of Muli Children's Family. I joined the home of Muli Children's Family in 2009. So before I was living in Eldoret and I was living with my family and then um, in 2007 in Kenya there was an election so after uh, the elections there was a post-election violence where people disagree because of the results of the elections so it was actually a tribal war that, that affected two main tribes in Kenya the Kikuyu and the Kalenjin and unfortunately I was one of the tribes which were affected. We were chased from Eldoret, our house was burned, uh, reduced into ashes. So you can imagine a situation where you sleep in your house the next day. You don't have a house, you don't have anything. You are left homeless, your, your parents are, are depressed. All your life investment is lost in just, you know, one, one big fire. So because we didn't have anywhere to stay, we went to live in the internally displaced camps. So it's a camp where people who are homeless, people who have been affected by wars or any form of people who have been chased basically from their home stay there. The UN and its agencies um, helped us and we were just depending on AIDS because our parents were not engaging in any economic activity. So life in the IDP camp was uh, very difficult because you can imagine that's a group of people who have lost everything. Some of them were a day before they had investments, they had properties, but now there are people in a place who are hopeless who are bitter who are hurt so it was a very a very i can say a, a very toxic environment but thankfully during that time uh, our dad my father dr charles Muli, sent a rescue ministry from and Alani to Eldoret and it was one of the most beautiful things that happened during that time. He provided food, he provided clothing and more importantly he provided guidance and counseling because uh, most people were actually traumatized by the situation. Many people were depressed, were hopeless, me inclusive because I was actually a very a very small girl right at, at that point. So he, he brought teachers, paid them and then he paid for our exams. He paid for our fees and we studied and through God's mercies and grace, we actually passed the exams. I'm, I'm so thankful because I, I don't even understand how under the circumstances we were able to pass our exams. So, and dad did not just leave us at that point, but he brought us to, to MCF homes, MCF Yata and Dalani. So we, me together with my other brothers and sisters and colleagues from Eldoret, we came to MCF and then I finished in 2012 and, and uh, performed well. So after that, I, MCF uh, gave me an opportunity to work in different departments like the greenhouse, uh, work in hospitality also and just different departments to be able to, to know what I wanted to do. MCF was uh, one of the best things that happened to me because in MCF I met people from different backgrounds and in MCF I was able to even develop my talents and because I, I used to be in the choir, I used to sing, I used to dance, I used to recite poems. I also got parental love and care, which was the most important thing. I have never seen my biological father, so I've been raised by my mom alone. So I have been fatherless. I had been fatherless all that time until I came to MCF. So dad really portrayed a very uh, important and beautiful father figure. He's also a mentor. He encourages you when you have life questions about different issues. I was able to develop a whole as a person, as a, as a woman. I knew how to take care of myself, how to interact, how to deal with people, how to live. In 2015, I joined Kabarak University School of Law through the guidance and help of Daddy Muli. I graduated in 2019. I passed very well because I got um, second upper division, which was like the highest class. So after 2019, Dad also encouraged me and sponsored me throughout until I went to the Kenya School of Law and did my, my postgraduate diploma for two years. I passed my final bar exams last year. Now after that, I'll be able to go and practice. And one of the things that encouraged me to actually pursue a degree in law is that there are a lot of injustices happening in the society and a lot of people don't have access to justice because uh, advocates and lawyers are very expensive. People of power grab, grab land from people who don't have power. I want to be able to help all of them so that we may be able to have a better society because laws, the, the justice system is one of the most important components of democracy and also the development of a nation. It's such an honor and a privilege also to be able to be the first lawyer advocate in MCF. So I'm so thankful that I'm able to now set um, set a path for them to be able to follow in so that at least they have someone to look up to in the processes. So I'm so thankful for everything that has happened to me in MCF. I came to MCF as a very small girl who 
hopeless, not have a clue about life. But here I am uh, after that period of time empowered and through the spiritual programs in MCF I've, I was able to even develop a personal relationship with God. So I'm so thankful because it's it's not just one area of my life but I've been able to grow as a person. My background does not define me. The challenges that I faced in the IDP camp or back at home, they are not hindrances but I'm so thankful because of the vision of our dad Muli who keeps on encouraging us and guiding us. Love is really contagious because one of the things that I, I can say that has helped MCF to grow since the, its inception up to right now is that daddy has love for what he's, do, he's doing. Love is like, you know, the greatest commandment. So the love that dad has able to, has able to show us it's not has not just transformed our lives has transformed the lives of our families and with love you can be able to do anything with love even resources and everything come so as much as uh, as as long as you do something from a point of love it will always be prosperous it will always be progress 